I love the United States. Back in 2012, I visited there for the first time with a group of dudes that I went to high school with. We went to school at Villanova in Cooparoo. I love the bright lights. I love that everything there is done on this grand scale with no possible thought of consequence of how much it's going to cost or how fat we're going to get from it. In fact, I remember standing in the middle of Times Square at New York and for the first time in my life thinking I could actually live away from Brisbane if I moved here. Everything about this place intrigues me and I love it. And so, whenever I hear people say, Australia's just getting more and more Americanized, I don't really see a problem with it. This, though, this might have been a step too far. In the early 40s, as World War II was breaking out, Brisbane became a mini-America. They believed that Brisbane was the last frontier, and that if the enemy got hold of Brisbane, then Australia was going down, and that was a real sign that the rest of the world could be in some trouble. U.S. flags hang from buildings. The U.S. anthem played at the start of movies at the cinemas. A whole heap of buildings were handed over to the U.S. forces so that they could do their thing. The biggest thing was that Australian women were completely wooed by the American men. And all of this, well, it kind of caused its own mini-war. The original Battle of Brisbane. My name's Scotty McDonald, and this is Brisbane is Weird, a podcast exploring all those weird stories that make up this amazing Australian city. Some are from the past, like this one, and some are still happening today, like the weird cult thing we found at 2am on a Wednesday morning in a Brisbane park. You'll find that in episode one. Hey, by the way, thank you to everyone that jumped onto the Apple Podcast Store and gave us a rating, five stars, uh, and a review in the last couple of weeks. It's a really good encouragement for us to keep doing what we're doing, and I would massively appreciate it if you could take like 20 seconds out of your day, jump on there, give us five stars, give us a review. Um, It's actually hugely helpful for us to keep growing and doing what we're doing, which we love, and we hope you love it too. Um, the other thing I just really quickly wanted to say, if you've got a story you want to share with us, brisbaneisweird.com is where you can jump online. We'd love to hunt down some of your stories. Um, and also, while you're there, you can actually sign up to our new newsletter. It'll send you an email every time we do a new episode or any time there's something else really exciting that we want to tell you about. It'll mostly be new episodes. Um, quick shout out to Newstead Brewing Co. Uh, it is their beer that I'm drinking right now. The main thing, M-A-Y-N-E thing. If you heard episode two about the family that kind of built Brisbane, but we think they might have got all their money because of a murder, um, that's what this beer is named after. Local Brisbane brewery, Newstead Brewing, making an amazing beer named after an amazing Brisbane story. I had to get right behind that. Anyway, now I'm really excited to tell you this story. As World War II raged on uh, in the early 40s, a lot of American troops were deployed to Australia. Men of the Army, Navy and Marines reinforced the battlefronts on six continents. In fact, at its peak, it was about a million. Brisbane had 80,000 troops in it. Bear in mind, at this time, Brisbane's population is about 330,000. So, 80,000 new people suddenly on your doorstep is a really big population increase. Of course, when they first arrived, it it was a positive thing. Like, Australia just wasn't strong enough to defend itself if our enemies came a-knocking. So, to have the American troops here in Brisbane more or less protecting the major cities of Australia was initially a really exciting thing. But as time rolled on, we didn't feel so positively. A lot of buildings were given over to the Americans. Brisbane actually resembled a US city with American flags hanging everywhere, the American national anthem being played just as much, if not more, than the Australian national anthem was being played. In fact, by the end of 1942, like the final months, military police from the US were breaking up up to 20 fights a night in South Brisbane, where the convention centre, Musgrave Park, all of that kind of stuff is. There was also a lot of stabbings and shootings that were being recorded between the Australian and US troops. The interesting thing is it's actually not too easy to find too much information on this, because we wanted to keep it quiet. 
we were trying to make out like this was a really good thing. We were being saved from the war. So the media was told to hush up on this kind of stuff. The tension, it wasn't coming from American flags, the American national anthem, our buildings being used by the American military. The story goes that the vast majority of tension was coming from the fact that the Australian women were far more interested in the United States troops. In fact, one journalist from a newspaper called The Truth witnessed on one night out, he saw 152 Australian ladies with 112 US troops and only 31 Australian ladies with 61 Australian troops. There was a little bit of male ego getting shot down here and the Aussie blokes weren't loving it. I mean, let's face it, the American blokes, they were far more suave. They had this cool, mysterious kind of strong Hollywood guy image about them. And the Australians... Well, they were typical Aussie blokes. Let me take you to a building that still stands on Adelaide and Creek Street in the city. It's six stories high. It's dark brick. Um, A mate of mine actually used to work in a financial planning firm there. There's a 7-Eleven on the corner underneath it and next to it is one of my favourite places to get an acai bowl, kiss the berry. Uh, at the time, it got taken over as the US Postal Building, the US Postal Exchange, or PX as it was called. And inside that building were luxuries that Australians did not have access to, particularly with the war going on. Nylon stockings, good ice cream. In fact, I don't think we had access to any ice cream while the war was raging on. And the US troops, despite their suave nature attracting the Aussie women, were also prepared to use all of those luxuries that they had access to, to their advantage when it came to wooing the Australian women. November 26, tensions were really simmering. The Aussies were getting over it, and the US troops were still trying to maintain their tough boy image. As the day went on, so did the drinking. And outside the Australian canteen, which was more or less the bar where all the Aussie troops were hanging out, also on Adelaide Street, there were five Australians arguing with one US troop. American military police showed up and they struck an Aussie. That was breaking point for the Australian troops. The entire canteen of drinking Australian troops ran out and began attacking the American military police. They chased them down Adelaide Street back to the postal exchange and as they went, Australians drinking in other pubs through the city joined them. 2,000 Aussies stood at the doors and windows of the Adelaide Street Creek Street building trying to raid the American postal exchange. Battens were flying and more military police came. After an hour of this, military police showed up with a light weapons carrier, and that was enough to kind of stop everyone and make them take a breath. Some Aussies, though, were typical Aussies, and they kept fighting. They started attacking this American military police carrier, and that led to accidental gunfire, resulting in one dead Australian and seven others injured, including one civilian. Eight others were injured that day from baton injuries, and for the rest of the evening, shotguns fired and echoed throughout the city. The military, of course, again, tried to hush media reports of what happened. Everything's good. Relations are fine. It's all going okay. The problem is, this just led to rumours of a massacre of Australians by the US forces. And what that led to the next day has to be one of the most horrific marks on Brisbane history. The night of November 27, 1942. On the corner of Queen Street and Edward Street. Ironically, where the American institution of the Apple Store now stands. Hundreds of Australians 
formed massive circles around defenseless Americans and started beating them. Some reports say 400 Australians to one American, with cries of kick him, kill him, ringing out. Could you imagine the hostility that must have existed in the streets of Brisbane for hundreds of Australian men to show up and start attacking defenceless people? Hundreds, verse one, with blood not being enough, death being the only thing you want. Again, this came after months and months of simmering tensions. Our buildings are being taken over. American flags are flying everywhere. And the American national anthem was played. This was not what caused the tension. Our Australian women being courted by these American men with their tough Hollywood GI looks, with their ice cream and their nylon stockings, with their luxuries that they could get hold of that we couldn't. The reality for the Australian men is they weren't angry at the American troops. It was their own women that were making a decision to go on a date with them. And in a disgusting display of male ego, instead of letting women have free choice, we said, how dare those Americans have their way with our women. It's worth noting that they weren't wrong. After the war by 1947, divorce rates had tripled. The main reason for divorce? Infidelity. Despite this disgusting mob mentality that happened because Brisbane blokes were scared about all their women being taken away by the Americans, there is one more point that needs to be made. Something else that happened earlier in the year. Something that suggests the Americans weren't so innocent. In March of 1942, months before this tension would blow up, in Brisbane, there was another set of attacks, almost riot-level breakout fights, and it had nothing to do with the Australians. The white US troops were taking on the black US troops. You see, a lot of these white US troops, they were from the deep south of America, and they were unhappy seeing these black troops allowed unrestricted access to things like the postal exchange, restaurants, bars, movie cinemas. And they definitely were unhappy seeing these black American troops allowed access to the Australian women. This was such a problem that in April, the police commissioner actually asked that no more Negro troops be sent to Brisbane. I'm one of those people that tends to believe when there's an issue that repeatedly involves the same group of people, chances are that group of people aren't completely innocent in it. Am I disgusted at our Australian troops for getting angry at the American troops just because they were more suave, just because they were doing better with the ladies? Yes, of course I am. But the fact that those same US troops months earlier were getting angry at the dark-skinned troops just because they had the same rights as them, I get it, racism was cultural then. But it turns out that the Americans were happy to flaunt how much luxury and freedom they had when they could hold it over the Aussies. But when someone was equal to them, they just couldn't hack it. Our national anthem. I love the US. I'm going on holidays there again in June. But this moment of Australian-United States relations... This has to be one of the most shameful parts of Brisbane's history. This is Brisbane is Weird.
My name's Scotty McDonald, and thank you so much for tuning in to episode four. Remember, you can grab all of our current episodes just by jumping online, brisbaneisweird.com, and you could subscribe to us there on your favorite podcasting platform and join the email newsletter, which is basically just an easy way to get an email anytime we release a new episode. Hey, if you've got a story that you think is 100% worth checking out, something weird going on in Brisbane, or... A myth, rumour you've heard about Brisbane or its past? Drop us a message online, brisbaneisweird.com or on our Facebook page, Brisbane is Weird. We've got an Instagram as well and it'd be awesome if you could follow us. Remember, the biggest help you can do to keep these episodes coming is jump onto the Apple Podcast page, give us a five-star review, say some nice words, be really helpful. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it.